hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Oh. Hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Looks like I have kind of a slow network connection, so I'm going to get that corrected and share this on my profile so more can join if you guys want. There we go. yesterday. I had done a previous version of this that I was not crazy about, so I made this one yesterday, which I felt was much, much better. So, we are going to be walking through this step by step. It is uh, beginner friendly. It just takes a little bit of patience. Thankfully, since we're not doing any overlapping layers, it won't be that bad. It won't take too long. All right. Almost set up, you guys. Sorry, the only way to do it is, is live, apparently. So, see what we got. See if I can, if there's any comments, anyone watching, whatever we got going on. All right. So, welcome. Are you guys ready to paint a rainbow? Hi, Aura, how are you doing? Um, all right. So, Something that you guys are familiar with is that I always do two pieces at once. Part of this is because it takes so long for parts of the watercolor piece to dry. Um, and part of it also is just like I like playing with different colors. So I am going to show you how to paint this traditional rainbow color right here. Uh, I also, something that you can do as well, you know, if you're uh, a grown up and want to paint a rainbow that's more like contemporary, um, I like to go on, on Pinterest and look up color palettes. So this is the one I'm gonna play with today. It's more grown up and I'm curious to see how it all plays together. So if you wanna have more of a challenge in color mixing, go onto Pinterest, look up color palettes, uh, and uh, go from there. All right, so the good thing about, I tried to do in every lesson is to show you how to measure it out. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this paper in half, this nice clean paper, and then measure out two of these. So I always do this live with you guys, that way you have time to do it. So if you want to paint two as well, great. If not, this is what I'm gonna be doing next. That way I can do two pieces at once essentially. All right, so I've got 12 inches wide, so six inches. Do another one here just to help keep a straight line. And for those who watch this, you can always tune me out with these normal things. You'll see the, the line is very light. That's because I'm using a very hard pencil. So the 6H means, there it is. The 6H means that it's um, very hard, so it makes a very light mark, which makes it easier to erase later. Also, these erasers are super fun. They're like my favorite thing. It's basically silly putty in eraser form, but it's good because it means that you can get, you know, very fine tips on the... Uh, eraser or have it be a big area. Because it's moldable, you can do more with it, which is great. All right, what do we got here? All right, so this one's easy. Because all the math we really need to do right now is we're gonna basically cut our paper into fourths. So as you can see, we're gonna center our rainbow. And since we're doing these drops down below, we're just gonna center the bottom of the rainbow on the center of the paper. So we're gonna cut the paper into fourths on each side, if you're doing two sides like me. So my page is nine inches tall. If your kiddo is watching along, what's nine divided by two? It's four and a half. Helps if I get the four and a half right. There we go. All right, I'm gonna draw my reference lines with that nice light pencil which I can, will either be easily covered up by the, the paint or um, can be easily erased later. A light pencil mark is easy to erase. All right, six inches for each side. That one's three, that one's three. And I'm gonna make a second mark a little higher up just to help make myself, give myself a straight line, okay. Something you may notice in the picture that I made 
If this is not a perfect circle, the lines are not perfectly straight, but that's an effect that I was going for. It was intentional, it's fun, it makes it look more handmade. So, um, I'll be just be showing you guidance on how to get roughly the right dimensions and how to, how to plan out these lines. Once again, they're also different widths in order to make it more, uh, more interesting, not just same flat and uniform. You can, measuring it out here on each side, you can measure out you know, the exact same width of the stripes. I like the different size stripes, but that's up to you. All right. So we've got the paper measured into force. That's what this green line is, okay? Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is figure out how wide we want the rainbow to be. And then that'll help us determine how tall it is because the width of the rainbow is gonna be the same as the highest point above the arch. So let me show you what I mean. All right, I like to work in centimeters lately. It's just easier that way. Um, let's see, do I wanna do 10 or 12 centimeters? I'm gonna do 12. So that's gonna be my point over there. Those are the outside edges of that. All right, so now I gotta figure out how big do I want this center piece to be? How big do I want that white space to be? And I want it to be as wide as it is tall. So I think I'm gonna go for two centimeters. So I'm gonna make it, of course, if you're centering it, you're gonna put those two centimeters centered over that center line, and this will be my white space right here. Same over here. Since this is two centimeters wide, I also want this negative space for the arch to also be two centimeters tall. So that's how tall it's gonna be. Okay. All right, so we want the curve of the rainbow to be consistent and width all the way around. So what that means is however wide this is here, we want it to be that width up here. So this section right here is five centimeters, which means we need from here to the top of the rainbow to also be five centimeters. So once again, this arch is supposed to be the same distance all the way around. That way it's nice and even as you go. All right, this is where I sketch in. Now that I have an idea of where everything needs to connect, this is where I tend to sketch in things. If you want, you can try and sketch in this middle part, which is easier to do since it's a smaller shape, sketch that first line and then from there you can give yourself more reference because once again everything is five centimeters out for mine i'm not sure how wide yours is but five centimeters from here that gives me another guidance five centimeters from here another guidance once again we don't want the lines to be perfect we want it to be more uh handmade more organic so it's okay this is just for this is just for reference. All right. So now we've got our outer layer and our inner layer. I'm actually gonna go ahead and erase this inner piece, because we're not gonna need it. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same over here. In part also so you can see me do it a second time without having to rewind everything. All right, there's my inner arch where that nice white space will be and my crazy monster looking <laughs> eraser. 
This is five centimeters out, which means right about here is five centimeters out and gives me guidance on how to make the outer arch. I just want to show you this uh, the raindrops right here. Hey, Ann, how's it going? Um, Beatrice, what's going on? Nice to see you guys here. Um, this uh, this is where the raindrops will be. Okay, so it's helpful to measure that out. That way, you get the uh, dimensions. That's the word I want, guys. Sorry, that's where you get the dimensions all laid out. So what I've done is like, for example, this is five centimeters above the arch. The arch is two centimeters, so this is a total of seven centimeters. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go seven, cedar, seven, ugh, seven centimeters below, but I have learned that it looks a little bit better if you bring it a little further than the height of the, of the rainbow. So that's seven centimeters, go another centimeter or two. If you're working in the same dimensions, you get the idea. So I want the point, so this is seven centimeters tall. I want the point of the rainbow triangle to be lower. I'm gonna put it at eight and a half. And then I connect the outer corners of the rainbow to the point of where the raindrops will be. Now, something you can do with the raindrops is you can do the raindrops in a way where they're just blue. You can just keep it very traditional, make them blue raindrops. I personally like all the colors, um, but once again, there are so many variations you can do with this, and that's also part of why I do two versions of this, so you can see um, the different possibilities. All right, now we gotta figure out the width of our stripes. Now here's the thing. Uh, in a typical rainbow, you guys know, we've got red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Roy, G, Biv. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven stripes. So we gotta fit seven stripes in here. Um, what I did just to make it simpler for myself is I just split the area in two. And then that also helps with the organic. So this is five centimeters wide. So 2.5, 2.5, 2.5. All right. There's my middle mark. So now I technically have just two stripes, okay? but I need to have room for seven total if I'm doing this traditional rainbow right here. So I'm gonna need to turn this one, okay, into four and this one into three or vice versa. So this one, just be consistent. So this one is, we'll make this one three. This one's half a centimeter, this one's half a centimeter. Half, 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 half. Once again, you can definitely freehand this. I have a feeling that a lot of you probably wouldn't be comfortable with that, and that's okay. Uh, honestly, I, I like planning these out too. Um, I feel like if I have a little more outline to begin with, it gives me more freedom to, to paint later. All right, so one, two, three. Now I need to change this into four. So they're going to be very different sizes. Um, I like it when the outside edge is super slender. Um, so I'm actually going to do uh, three tenths of a centimeter. Real tiny. Just being consistent. Okay, I'm going to add another reference point. 
it for myself. Once again, we want it to be organic, but we also want it to yeah, have consistency. And just follow the line of that curve. Something else you can do if you have something the right size and you really feel like this is getting that initial curve is beyond you. Uh, think about, what do I have? Oh, that's a good one. You have a roll of tape, you have a cup, you have a bowl, you have a lid. Um, you can use that and put it in the halfway point and then trace around it. And then that can give you sometimes a cleaner outer edge if you'd like to go that route. Sometimes I use that for other things. Um, all right, so I still need to do this. This is now two, I need to make this one into three. So we'll do another. Again, just make your references wherever you need to. Alright. I admit the first time that I did this, I did not do my math right, so I will be double checking my math. Don't worry if you have ever had to do that too. Like, that's fine. <laughs> four, five, six, seven, Roy, G, B, I, V. Great. Okay. Um, take that away too, so I'm not painting over it. And now you have the outline for the rainbow. I'm actually going to do this again. I'm going to do different widths over here just for the fun of it. But like I said, it does help me to have that middle line. This makes more sense in my head to work that way. I will try to sketch that one quickly so that way we can get to the painting part. Faster. I'm gonna make this one very skinny. But I know what that color is going to be. I actually want more of that color. Once again, this is gonna be the rain, the traditional rainbow colors. This one's gonna be the, the colors I chose. So I'm gonna make this one wider. Two, three, four, five stripes so far. And actually, something to keep in mind that I almost forgot is that the color palette that I chose has only six colors instead of seven. So I need to change up how many stripes I have. Almost forgot. So we'll do something like. Once again, I'm just eyeballing it for speed. 
erasing some of the darker reference lines, which will be easy later. So this part will go faster. Now, something you can do is you can use this blue painter's tape. I like to use that. Um, clean release. So just like stuff that you'd use while painting your house, the idea is that it would stick to the paper, but it wouldn't pull stuff off. If you do it just right, you can get a nice clean line. Um, I worked without it, um, but let me show you. That one should be okay. It looks like I, I was pretty good about pushing it down. I have no fingernails, guys, bear with me. Okay, that one turned out okay. That one has a nice clean lift. But I do want to show you the danger. So this is cold pressed paper. That's probably what you're working with too. Which means if you kind of like move it back and forth or run your fingers over, you can tell it's not completely smooth. Hot press is super smooth. It's a very different experience. Cold press has these ridges. So because of that, even when you have tape pressed down super tight, um, there's still a chance that paint gets underneath. Let me show you. Say so this, the paint was either really heavy or the tape wasn't uh, pressed down enough. So paint leaked under and you lost that clean line shape that you're going for. So once again, if you push down really hard on the edges, you'll probably be okay, um, but it's not a guarantee. I like having more control, so a lot of times I just won't use it. And in this case, it's covering part of my work area. And as I'm going in between, it's screwing with how I want things to, to dry. So that's not what I'm gonna do. Now, this next step, now that we have everything all sketched out, is I'm gonna do alternating colors because we aren't, you see, you can see the tiny white lines, we aren't gonna do overlapping, but we save ourselves the possibility of bleeds. Now bleeds would be if these colors like overlapped or touched accidentally, they would start to go into each other like this. Now, if you want that effect, great, go for it. That's a lot of fun. Uh, if you want the more controlled clean version like this is, it's easier to start with these, with the every other color. So you can use your reference with a Roy G. Bib if that helps, whatever you've got to do. Um, and then I have found that it works well also for distributing the colors of the drops. You can see we actually dropped some clear water on here earlier. <laughs> All right. All right, so. I've used two round brushes for this. Um, it's kind of hard to get that curve with a flat brush. So I do have that. You can try if you're comfortable with it, like using maybe just the corner. Um, I like using the round brushes because as you can see, it comes to a nice point and also the smaller brushes um, come to an even smaller point. Once again, I'm used to working very, 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 very tiny. If you can see that, so it's very small. So this is no sweat. All right, so all I'm gonna do is I am going to fill in the outer ring of the rainbow uh, so on this one it would be red uh, and then on this one i get to choose which color i want and i really want there to be a lot of this one i decided to do the rainbow like that so this is going to be my outer rainbow and then after painting the red stripe then i'm going to put about mm, three or four droplets down below of the matching color that seems to help with uh, the distribution let's go I've got a nice warm red that I'm using. I'll try and move my paints up so you can see them in the camera. Hopefully you can. Don't need the pencil right now, thank you. And once again, I have a fancy water tray. If you guys have watched my videos, you know this already. Have two water cups if you can. One is for rinsing the initial paint off and then one is for clean water in order to use to activate the paint without mixing the other color. So for me, this counts as my one cup, two cup, but have two cups, one for rinsing and then one for um, painting, basically. So, all right. And then all you gotta do is just follow the line. If you are using tape, great. Make sure that you've pressed it down really, really well um, I like to use the smooth tip of my paint brushes. That usually does pretty good because it's hard, but it, um, so it puts a good pressure on it, but it also slides well, so you can really press the edge in uh, nicely. Um, I am freehanding the bottom of the rainbow, 
And once again, since the rest of it is a little bit free-handed as well, I'm okay with the bottom being slightly uneven as long as it's roughly on, on the base line. Hopefully, okay. <laughs> my biggest concern is always that um, my head will block your, your vision. Because a lot of times I work so tiny that, and honestly my sight's not that good. <laughs> Um, I tend to get right up on the page when I'm working. So I'm using a nice warm red, just very bright, very cheerful. I'm filling in that line, making sure to finish it while it's still wet, that way it's nice and smooth. If you want, you can add some variations, like I have like a, a cooler red here, oops. Alright, that needs to come out a little bit more. That's not as smooth as I want. There we go. If you want, you can always try and drop in a few like variations. So I have this like cool red here, which almost looks purple. Um, but while it's still wet, like if you want to try and make it more interesting, drop that in there. After all, these effects are what makes watercolor so lovely. So if you want, you can do that. Just to add a little interest, a little color. It's nice, it just depends on what kind of effects you want to use. All right, so now I have the red stripe. For the stripe, I like using bigger brush, but because I want more control over those little droplets down here, I like to use the smaller round brush for that. So I just do about three to four, make sure they're in different places and slightly different sizes. Um, you don't want to cover up all of the white space, so don't be afraid of leaving some of that there. I'll make this one bigger and once again this is good for distribution to do the to do the drops as you do the stripes and then at the end you can always go back and add in a few more but I've always had good experience with everything balancing out well this way okay my favorite things about this piece is that I don't have to worry about things drying before moving on to the next step and just making you guys wait. So because I added a little bit of that extra red in the outer layer, I'm doing that in the drops as well, just to make it interesting. All right, so if you're doing a more contemporary color scheme, um, like I am, here's what I'm doing. You can decide how you want the, the colors to be or the layers. I'm actually gonna lighten my pencil marks a little bit. I want them for reference, but because the colors I'm using turned out so light when I was doing it. I'm gonna make sure these are as bright as possible. Something to also keep in mind with your pencil, it's just like you want to draw lightly because if you push into it too hard, it will leave a tiny channel. It'll like put a tiny dent into the paper. And sometimes that actually does show up with the, with the paints. So, okay. So I really, I'm a fan of green, you guys know this by now. Um, uh, hi, Ortel. Um, I really am a fan of green, especially this kind of like emerald green. This actually was a little bit darker, of course, when I put it on, because something I've said many times is uh, watercolor will dry 30% lighter than the color that you paint it while it's wet. So try and go a little stronger um, in, your, in your pigments if you can. So this, I was able to mix together um, my Viridian Green, my Cobalt Blue, and a little bit of black to get the color I wanted. I think I may actually mix a little bit more to play around with that. Something else you can do, especially if you have like your own color set and it's limited. Um, this is something I've pulled out before. Make a, uh, a color harmony, or a, oh my god, a color sheet. So these are all the colors I have 
on my tray. I've got yellow, warm yellow, um, cold blue, warm blue, cold red, warm red, cold green, warm green, and then up here at the top, I have brown and uh, black. And so you can see how everything mixes together. And so if you need a specific kind of shade, this is a really good reference for what two colors can I mix together to get about what I need. It's a really good starting point. Um, so that was something I was able to use this time around. I did need to add a third color, so it was, once again, just a starting point. All right, let's get this nice emerald green going. And if you are just doing the primary color, uh, water, uh, rainbow, then please go ahead, jump, jump on it, keep going, you've got the idea. Just make sure that you move on to the third color. So for example, move all of my papers over there. Like I have here, go on to yellow instead of orange. That way you preserve that white space, it'll make things easier for you. If you're doing something more modern like this one, feel free to jump in and paint along with that. Again, just following the line. All the way down here. Okay. I know that's gonna dry lighter, so I'm trying to drop a little more paint in there while it's still really wet. Let it make a nice strong color. Okay. Oops. And once again, we're gonna do raindrops below. Once again, just remember to do them in different sizes. Don't put them on straight lines. Do about three or four of them. And then at the end, you can always fill them out. If you feel like more is needed. a little bit, I'll go back to the traditional. Once again, I'm going to the second layer. Uh, so red, orange, yellow, going to yellow. I like this really warm cadmium yellow. Once again, I'm skipping a layer to make sure that one dries a little bit more. Try to be careful not put my hand in the wet spots, which is not always easy. I'm basically following the lines that I drew for myself. Once again, it does take time to plan this out, but I feel like I can paint more confidently later once I give myself some guidelines to run with. So once again, if you feel like you want to freehand it, go freehand it, have fun.
smaller brush for some yellow cups. Four different sizes, no straight lines. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that, but there is a scooter coming down our, our alley. We got the balcony window open. Um, it's a nice day. So I've got these three colors. Uh, so I want to skip this middle one, if I can, and go straight to this more grayish green one. Now one of the things that this chart won't show you and that you have to play around with is that basically these colors are 50-50. So for example, doo -doo -doo -doo, see if I can find an easy one. All right, so this is the blue cobalt and yellow warm. And when you mix these together 50-50, it makes this not that attractive color. Um, but when it comes to color mixing, you can get different effects by, you know, doing 10% blue and 90% yellow. And then of course you could mix multiple colors. You could have 10% cobalt, 20% alizarin, and 70% yellow to get different effects. But this is a good starting point. So I'm saying that because the colors that I achieve here I'm actually going to move this a little bit to get that color to not puddle quite so much where it's puckering. Um, is This is mostly just a diluted black with just a tiny bit of this put in there to help make it match. That's all it is. So once again, it's not 50-50. It's different amounts of water. It's different amounts of pigment um, compared to each other. So... Let me get that set up. That one is, once again, this is a lighter color in general. I'm actually going to want more of that for reference later. And like I said, something that's helpful is when you do these, like, you basically need to keep a color recipe book if you do um, mix these colors together. Because... If you want to recreate it later, you may may forget how, because you may reference it tomorrow, you may reference it a week from now, a year from now. It's really helpful to have color recipes, especially with the makers of the stuff that you work with in the past, things like that. All right. So we're going for that nice diluted gray with just the hint, just a tiny hint of green in there. Skipping that second layer, I think I want that to be more black. And something you can always do is just like you can test, if you're mixing colors, you can test them on a different sheet of paper. I'm going faster, so I'm cheating a little bit and trying to mix while it's still wet, which you can too if you feel comfortable with that. Making room for a very skinny stripe later. And just like the other ones, we're going to have a few droplets down here. 
good thing about pieces like this is once you get into a rhythm, it's easy to just keep rolling. So I'm going to clean that out real quick. There we go. And I'm going to add the blue line and blow off a piece of hair that was on the paper. So much stuff on my desk right now that I can't really turn the page and have you guys still be able to see it. But I often like to twist the paper here and there to make it easier for my wrist to get these shapes sometimes. So don't be afraid to do that if you need to. So something else you may be able to do is there's something called masking fluid. It's basically a kind of removable glue. Um, and I'll be using it in, in future projects with you guys, I'm pretty sure. Um, but you apply it to the paper and then you paint over it. And it acts like uh, the tape as far as a resist. Nothing gets painted on it. And then later you can pull it off. The only problem with it is if you're going for a clean line, it just can't do it. It's coming out as like a thick liquid, so it will not give you a clean line, really. Your best chance, if you want an extremely clean line, is that you can take a gamble and really push this into your paper. One of the risks there is that it will peel up some of the fibers. Um, uh, and you could, if you wanted to, line in between each of these stripes with the masking fluid. Since it is such a, uh, you know, it's not meant to be a super crisp piece. Um, you can do that, but in my experience of working with it, I always like the lines I get better when I'm in control of the paint and not relying on masking fluid to maintain the white for me, for what it's worth. All right. And then we just keep on rolling. So, one, two, three, skip this one, go to this one. Okay. So I've got this tan thing going. Oh, so my colors, of course, bled together that I prepared beforehand. That's okay. Hey, Leah, how's it going? All right. So what I did is I put together for that tan color, I used the warm yellow, Brown. Actually, a little bit of the cold yellow just to fill out the, the way it looks. Yeah, that's great. Once again, 
kind of have to play with it on paper, so. That'll work for that layer, but that's not what I want for here. So sometimes you have to experiment. Irish rainbow right now, I feel like. I kind of like it. It's like mossy. Four raindrops or so in different places. Okay, awesome. All right, down to purple. Here we go. I like to use the aloe vera and crimson with the cobalt blue. Makes a really nice shade. As you can see, <laughs> I actually don't like this color very much. This is where I mixed the, uh, <laughs> the warm red with the cobalt blue and it made this weird scarlet. I'm not a fan of. And once again, if I had looked at the color chart I made, I probably would have had more of a heads up on how icky that was. So what was it? So I've got the, the red, scarlet, cobalt blue. Yeah, I should have known that it wasn't gonna turn out well. But you can see how the alizarin and the cobalt makes a much better color. So that's another reason why um, using the color chart is super helpful. Looks like I've got great Kool-Aid. Right. Alright, you just keep on at it. six colors over here so I only have three I only have three more to go 
Um, come back to my color reference. I'm trying to put this color between that grayish we put down and that nice green stripe overhead. As you can see, that green stripe, I put a little extra paint in so it's still wet. That's okay because with this design, it has a white space. I just encourage you to space it out like this. If you're not certain to give it time to dry, it's less room for error. Um, but I feel pretty confident we can pull that off. This one is kind of somewhere in between. Once again, you can always, yeah, there we go. And test what you mix on a different sheet of paper before committing it to the one you're on now. Because this is such a small stripe, I am using the smaller brush. Helps me get in the smaller spaces and it gives me more control. So now I basically just follow the lines laid out to me from the previous stripes. Oh, we'll try not to put my hand in these wet parts. And this is where I really want to be careful because even if I get just a little bit into that green puddle up top, it'll spill in. Now it could have a really nice effect, but not an effect I want. At least not an effect I can control. And that's the hard thing with watercolor. You can do some really lovely things if you're willing to let go of that control. Um, but if you want something to look a specific way, That's where it gets tricky. Hopefully my head isn't too much in the way. Make sure that you keep working with it while it's still wet, and that will keep it smooth. And sometimes it's kind of tricky with these skinny parts because the smaller the area, the faster it'll dry up, obviously. Um, so just make sure that you keep, keep working, keep going fast. With certain parts of watercolor, it's just like, sometime my boyfriend will come in the room and ask a question, and I'll just have to ask him to wait until I I finish a certain <laughs> a certain element because when you're working wet and wet, you just have to get it done. All right, there's that stripe. This does look rather Irish, guys. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> Maybe the other stripes will mean more to the front.
orange. I mix together my warm cadmium red with the warm yellow. And you can see I've already got it all worked with right here already. And just wake that back up. That's what I like about watercolors. You have to paint dry that, you come back over with a wet brush, good to go. You can see that I like to put my pinky down on the page. I know that I've got wet spots going on here, so this kind of helps give me balance without putting my whole palm on the page and dipping it into a wet spot. I can turn the page to deal with the, the curve of the rain a little better, but that's okay. Trying to maintain, looks like that yellow one got kind of wet. <laughs> so, but once again, we like that hand, hand uh, drawn effect. I'm actually gonna drop a little bit more red in there. Just for fun, just for the effect. Two, three, four. I got this like yellowish tan now. All right. And like I said, I had this mixed up before, but in the same place. the colors blend together and I kind of have to start over. Okay. That's different from the, okay. I like the color of that top of there, how it's doing. If you're lucky, you mix the colors a certain way. Sometimes you can see like the, the texture between the two colors coming together where it's not quite completely mixed. And that's it, that's how I always like when that happens. I 
we do goof and go over the line. You can always use a clean paper towel, it's not this one, and try and blot it up immediately. The faster you do it, the better you are. Uh, and then go back and correct. But if you have a steady hand, you should be okay. stretch guys. Now we got green for the basic. I haven't been giving you guys instruction, but you guys know how to do this. You can keep saying the same things about I need a small brush here and use this color here and draw the drops again here. But I'm sure after the 15th time, you've got it down. So I will just tell you my end quietly. Hopefully you can handle it on your end too, which I'm sure you can. crazy playing extras in here. Remember different sizes, not on the same straight line. spots put them in. This one is pretty similar, but instead of like the greenish, this is more of a bluish gray. So we'll add that 
and this one should be done. So I got black and I used like a cold, a colder blue for this one. That's what I want, guys. See how it all hangs out. How's it going? to decide if this is about how I want the drops to be. I think that's okay. I like how it's laid out. And now let's put the final stripe over here. This one's weird because it's indigo, so it's basically a bluish, a bluish purple. So what that means, hi. What that means is I'm just gonna add more blue the purple I made earlier. So remember how I said it's not just 50-50 with the color. It's not just 50-50 with the uh, with the color divisions. So instead of doing like 50% red, 50% blue, I'm doing more blue to make it more of a bluish purple. It still looks pretty similar, but it makes a difference. more drops. This one is done too. Except for maybe going back and cleaning up some uh, some pencil lines there.
and see how the colors balance. I'm gonna put more yellow. For white space, the purple. That one looks funny and bright. Let's round that out a little bit. Oh, that I'm going to add a little more over here, too, because I can see that that one's a little, a little empty, too. So that's all you're doing, is like when you get to the end, you'll see like where the white spots feel unbalanced, where you feel like you could... Because some colors are more powerful than others, some colors are more similar than others. So like these three are pretty similar when you put them down here. They kind of blend together, so I liked having the yellow and oranges in here to uh, to pop out and to make a difference. Same with like that strong outer layer color, um, because that also is a, is a bigger contrast. Maybe one more right here. And I think we'll call that a day. All right, guys, there you go. Uh, those are watercolor rainbows. This one's more traditional. This one is more contemporary. Uh, if you want to just do something for fun, but you don't want to have it like nursery style. Either way, it's fun. It's easy. Uh, it doesn't take too long. Once again, this took longer because I did two versions to show you the different variations, different color schemes, different strategies for going about it. Anyways, well, that is the end. Let me tell you about what I've done in the past so that you can know what to look for if you want to keep doing lessons right now, I'll also tell you what I'm doing in the future so you can look oh, so you can look for what's coming next. In the past, if you liked that this was kid friendly, I also did these thumbprint bumblebees. I've got that video in the group and on YouTube. Um, if you like things that are just like more simple and contemporary, you can also find these videos. Uh, you can do this foggy lake scene, these mountain scenes. Um, I also have this in the Facebook group, however, with technical difficulties, that one's not on YouTube. I may have to redo that one, but there is a video in the group for that. Uh, in the future, in the near future, I will be going over textures. So for example, using leaves in your work, using bubble wrap, and we'll be going over different ways to do it, how to layer it, how to apply it beyond that. And then we'll also keep doing uh, more traditional like step-by-step -step lessons. Tomorrow, we will be doing this ombre moon, ombre, ombre? I don't know how to say it, guys. We'll be doing this. That's also easy because it has these spaces in between just like the rainbow. It goes fast. And then I'm also working on this ginkgo leaves one. I'll let you guys know when that goes up. Uh, as well as I just posted an event for this one uh, with uh, hand lettering and watercolor flowers for glazing. All right, that is what I have for you guys today. Here in the near future, this will be up on YouTube. Uh, feel free to comment with any questions. If you painted this, feel free to share the picture. I love seeing what you've done. Um, and if you want to help support this channel, I'm trying to do it for free as long as I can, but this does take supplies and time. If you're able to support it, that'd be really great. There are details in the video description. Um, and yeah, you can always reach out to me with any questions you have. I hope you have a good day and I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.